Howdy folks. In this video, we're going to show you what happens when you use the Calculate Revisor providing both current row and override filters. Up to now, uh, we've been giving uh, Calculate and, and frankly measures any revisor, either current row filtering or override filters, but uh, not both. So in this video, we're going to show you uh, what happens when you give it both and how it behaves. It's actually pretty simple. Um, and frankly, when you're starting out, you won't do this very often, but as you get more advanced, you're, you're going to do it uh, more and more. So now is a good place to sort of get familiar with the idea. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I'm here in Filter Revisors Part 1.xlsx, and I'm in the Calc, Cur, Row, and Override uh, tab. So it's Calculate with both Current Row and Override filters. And so what you can see down here is a big old block of code, <clears throat> right? So uh, we're going to uh, we're going to do this average x over all the values of shift. So we're going to get this derivation right there to get all the values of shift, uh, and we're going to perform an average over some expression column. The definition of the expression column is this big block down here, right? And if you'll notice, uh, it has uh, at its heart, at the very tip top, a revisor, this calculate revisor. So it's definitely going to perform current row filtering for each and every shift for that shift and that shift there. But in addition to uh, that, right, we've also comma provided additional arguments to calculate, right? We've given it a second argument. We could have given it a second, third, fourth, and fifth. But anytime you have uh, more than one, uh, that second, you know, plus argument, all the other arguments are override filters. And so we're going to see um, how we add both of them and sort of what that looks like. So um, let's start with the derivation part, right? We go get all the values of shift. And since there's no filters in place, well, there's going to be both lunch and dinner. So let's go ahead and just start that part up. So we've got shift, lunch, and dinner, okay? And so now uh, we're going to add, uh, so we've gotten all the values of shift. We're going to add an expression column to it with this big, long definition, which we will eventually average because it's average x, right? So um, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type in exp, and I've already kind of pre-populated this. Now, uh, what we're going to do is for each and every one of these cells, we're going to run uh, this block of code right here, right? So let's, let's, I'm actually going to go ahead and just highlight this one right off the bat. Highlight this one right off the bat. There we go. So for that cell, we're going to run this whole big block right there. That's the definition of our expression column. And in it is uh, the calculate revisor at the very top. So the very first thing we're going to do, uh, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to revise the filters. Then we can run this sub-expression. So let's, let's be good. And uh, whenever we see a revisor, we're going to freeze that sub-expression in our mind's eye. We're going to imagine that code being frozen because it can only run after the filters have been revised, right? So I'm going to go ahead and right-click there, make this kind of light blue color. Okay, brr, it's frozen. Big block ice. Calculate will not run this sub-expression until it's done revising the filters. It will perform both current row filtering, right, for that row right there, and it will also add an override filter, right, which we've added right there as argument two. Okay, speaking of which, right, so Calculate's going to perform current row filtering in that cell right there. In fact, let me make both of those yellow. I'm a little easier to look at. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so Calculate's going to perform uh, current row filtering first, right? So it's going to create it's going to uh, create a revised filter context and start with current row filtering. Are there any values in the current row? Yeah, shift equals lunch. Okay, so I'm going to come over here, type in shift, type in lunch. There we go. So Calculate will add this as the first filter. I'm going to go ahead and click that over. I'm going to hold down control to make a copy. Again, more accurate to say that it moves it, but I like seeing them in both places. So uh, calculate adds a filter for the current row of shift equals lunch as a filter, right? That's its current row filtering. And now since it's performed current row filtering, it moves on to step you know, 1B, the second part of the revision, right? Are there any override filters? Well, uh, before there was only uh, one or the other, but now we have both, right? So we've got the, current, the value of the current row, which is lunch. We also have this override filter down here, right? So let's go ahead and add this override filter, okay? So what are we going to do here? We're going to go derive all the values of the type column regardless of filters. We're going to add uh, this column to it. We're just going to keep the true rows. And that'll be our, our table that we use to, for the override. So let's start with all the different types. Well, uh, so there's to go and dine in, right? So let's type in type. We've got to go and dine in, right? And now uh, we're going to add an expression column to it with this definition, type equals to go. So for each and every row, we want type equals to go. So I'm going to type in exp, right? And I've already got that pretty populated. So uh, for each row, we check to see if that type is equal to to go. That one is, that one is not. We only keep the true rows because this is the filter function, right? It only keeps the true rows of that uh, expression column. So what do we get over here? We get type and we get to go, okay? So uh, this block of code down here produces this table. And now Calculate's going to take it and say, okay, this is argument two of Calculate. I need to take this table and stick it into the filter context. So I'm going to go click this right here. Click and drag. I'm going to hold down Control to make a copy. 
slightly more accurate to say that I move it, but I like the copy. Okay, so now we've added both our current row filter for lunch and our override filter for uh, to go, right? Current row filter is provided by the uh, the table that we're iterating over right there. Override filter is provided by that snippet of code there in argument two, right? There's those right there. And now we've got our revised filter context. Let's go ahead and filter down to that revised filter context. So we've got lunch. We've also got to go. Okay, so uh, now that we've got that, right, we could go ahead and unfreeze our expression column, right? Or I'm sorry, not our expression column. We could unfreeze our sub expression and run it. Calculate says, hey, my entire, the reason I exist is to revise the filters, then I can run this sub-expression. I've revised the filters, so now I can go ahead and unfreeze this sub-expression and run it. Unfreeze that sub-expression and run it. There we go. Okay, so uh, what is a sub-expression? Uh, well, we've seen this many, many times. Go get all the visible rows of many, add this column to it, a column with this definition, and sum up the results of that new column. Let's go get all the many rows. Control-C to copy. Come down here. Control-Alt-V to paste special. Click on values and hit OK. There we go. I've derived that temp table right there. And I'm going to add a, an expression column to it with the definition for each row. Get the units, right? And so I get 2 and 1 and 3. And I sum it up because it is the sum x function. So 2 plus 1 plus 3 equals 6. And that 6 is actually what gets returned right about there. OK, 6. OK, good. Now, uh, as, as you probably have uh, noticed, uh, Calculate, like all revisers, uh, is a very good roommate, which means it cleans up after itself, which means after it's done revising the filters and running the sub-expression, it sets the, uh, the filters back the way it, it found them, right? So I'm going to click on this little swatch there of uh, orange and use it as an eraser. So I'm going to Control-C to copy. I'm going to select these cells right there, Control-V to paste, just to sort of simulate uh, setting the filter context back to the way that Calculate found it, OK? So now we're all done with this cell. We're all done with that cell. Click on no fill right there. Now we're going to go ahead and worry about this cell, where we're going to do the exact same uh, bit of code right there, right? Because it's the same expression column definition. So I'm going to click right there. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. Fabulous. OK, so now uh, so now, what are we going to do? Well, uh, same thing as before, right? Calculate uh, is a, a revisor, which means we need to, whenever we see a revisor, it's the first thing that happens. We're going to freeze the sub-expression, freeze that sub-expression. We're only going to run this. We're only going to run this after the filters have been revised. OK, so this is what we will run after uh, Calculate revises the filters. How is it going to revise it? Well, a two-step process. First, it's going to perform current row filtering, also known as context transition. Are there any values of the current row? Yeah, shift equals dinner right there. OK, before it was lunch. Now it's dinner because we're in this row. So let's go ahead and add that as a filter, right? And I should say Calculate's going to add it as a filter. So I'm going to type in shift. I'm going to type in dinner. So let's click and let's drag this into the filter context. Assuming I can, 50-50, there we go. Click and drag, I'm gonna hold down control to make a copy. More accurate to say that I move it, but I like the copy so I can see it in both places. Good, so Calculate's added this current row value as a filter, so we've got a filter for shift equals dinner. Now Calculate says, okay, good, now I'm done with current row filtering. Are there any override filters, right? Oftentimes, uh, when you use Calculate uh, in an iterator like this, you won't provide any, but here we have. See, it says comma. This is uh, argument two. This is our override filter. So we have to go uh, you know, run this bit of code to go get our filter, and then Calculate will add it as well right, as an override. OK, so what are we going to do? Same as before, uh, go get all the types, add a column to it with this definition, and just keep the true rows. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type in type. right. Now we're using the all derivation, so it's actually going to ignore any filters that could be in place. Oh, goodness me, I forgot to, uh, I reset the filters here. I forgot to reset them up here. I keep forgetting to do that. Let me go and do that. Set these back. Set these back. OK, OK, OK. So we're going to go get all the types regardless of the filters that are in place. So there's to go and dine in. So I'm going to get to go. No, not to, but to go and dine in, right? And uh, what are we going to do? We're going to add a column with this definition right there. So I'm going to type in exp. And hand enter, right? So for each and every row, it's going to see if that row's type is equal to to go. It's true on that row, because to go equals to go. It's false on that row. And uh, what does the filter function do? It keeps the true rows. So this whole block of code right there produces a temp table, a temp table that looks like this, exactly like the one above, right? Which you kind of might expect. OK, good. So uh, this resolves to that temp table right there. Now Calculate's going to say, OK, uh, this is argument two of, of me. Right? So that second argument is an override table. I need to go add this as a filter. I already added the current row filter. Now I need to add this override filter. So I'm going to hold down Control, make a copy of it, 
Okay, there we go. Okay, good. So now I've added the current row filter for shift equals dinner. And based on this block of code right there, I've created and added an override filter for type equals to go. So now I've performed both current row filtering and override filters. This is now my new revised filter context, right? So let's go filter down to dinner this time and to go. And to go. There we go. Okay. So now, under this uh, new revised filter context, calculate says I'm done revising the filters, I can go ahead and unfreeze my sub-expression and run it. So I'm going to right-click on there, give this a light gray color. Now I can run this sub-expression under the revised filters. Okay. So what are we going to do? <clears throat> go get all the visible rows of many, add a column to it with this definition, and sum up the results. Easy, easy. So I'm going to go come up here, select that single row, that one lone burger, Come down here, control alt V to paste special. Click on values, click OK. And now we're going to add a column to it with that definition. Sum up the results. I'm going to come over here, type in EXP. And there we go. I've already got the other stuff uh, ready to go. So for every row, it gets the units, and there's only one row, so it gets two. And it sums it up, and two uh, plus nothing is two. So this two is the actual answer for that cell right there. So I'm going to go ahead and type in two right there. Okay. And now uh, we've got the number. Calculate has returned that value, uh, but it has to tidy up a little bit. And it's an excellent roommate, so it always does a good job tidying up. It's going to set the filters back to the way it found it. So I'm going to come up here, Control C to copy that little swatch. Select these guys, Control V to paste, and see we're getting those filters back to the way that Calculate found it, right? Okay, and this time I'm actually going to remember to do this bit where I set this back to the way it was. Sorry, I do hope that's not too confusing. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So now we're done with this cell right there. I can go ahead and remove the coloring right there. So now, uh, what have we done? Well, we've gotten all the values of shift. There they are. For each and every one, let's see, actually, I can stop highlighting that as well. Do, 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 do. For each and every one, uh, we've run this bit of code, right? To go get the to go units, essentially, right? So that's six is the to go units for lunch, and two is the to go units for dinner. Right? And now what are we going to do with the results? Well, we're going to average them because it's the average x function. So I'm going to type in a average, double click on average, select those two values right there, which you probably could have done on your head. And I'm going to go ahead and enter, and I'm going to get a 4, which is actually the answer we are looking for. So 4 is the answer to this. So 4 is the average uh, to-go units per shift. Okay, let's go ahead and do something very similar, just, just to see it twice. Right? It's basically going to be the exact same thing because it's a little tricky to keep this stuff in your head. Uh, the only difference in this second example is the type is not going to be uh, to go. The type is going to be uh, dine in. But otherwise, we're still going to go get all the shifts and, and more or less kind of do the same thing. Right? So speaking of which, let me arrow up here a little bit. There we go. So <clears throat> just to see something very, very similar, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Right? So we're going to start by getting all of the shifts. Right, and so there's no filters in place, so we've got both lunch and dinner for shift. So I'm going to click down here, type in shift. We're going to get lunch, and we're also going to get dinner. How about that? Lunch and dinner, still no breakfast, right? And so now that we've got both of those shifts, right, uh, average x says I need to add this expression column to it so that I can average it. So we're going to add this whole thing, right, as an expression column right there. So I'm going to type in exp, and when I hit enter, right. Uh, what we see is for each and every cell, we're going to go run this big old block of code right there, which includes that it's very tip top. I'm sorry, this big old block of code right there, which includes that it's very tip top, the calculate revisor, right? Okay, so let's think about this cell right here. In fact, I'm going to select both of those and highlight them both. Highlight them both. Okay, so with that cell right there, right, it's going to be doing all this stuff over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so. We're going to do this big whole block of code. And what's the very first thing we see in this block of code? The calculate revisor. And so whenever we see that revisor, we need to find the sub-expression and freeze it with our eyes and remind ourselves that it will only run. It will only run after the filters have been revised. Let's go ahead and freeze it. I'm going to right-click and make this that light blue color. Burr, it's frozen in ice. Okay. So uh, now that we've got that bit right there, right, uh, we can go ahead and revise the filters. So to revise the filters, there's two steps. There's step 1A and step 1B, right? We're going to perform current row filtering, adding any current row values as filters, and then we'll do override filters. Well, are there any values for the current row? <laughs> yep, just like before, shift equals lunch. So let's go ahead and add that. Shift equals lunch, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And for current row filtering, calculate. We'll take that value of shift equals lunch and add it 
to the filter context. I'm going to hold down Control to make a copy of it. Right? Slightly more accurate to say that it moves it, but I like seeing both places, seeing it in both places. So good. <clears throat> so now we've performed current row filtering out of the current row value as a filter. Also known as context transition. And now uh, we're going to uh, see if there's any override filters and add those. Well, yeah, right? Calculate has a second argument. So there's at least one override filter. In fact, there's exactly one override filter, right? If there was a comma and a third argument, there would be two override filters. Okay, so uh, what is the override filter? Well, uh, here's the definition for it. So we're going to go get all the different types regardless of filter, right? Then uh, we are going to uh, add a column to it with this definition uh, each for each row type to see if the type is equal to dine in. And then we are going to uh, filter down the results. Filter down the results. Just keep the true. Actually, we're, not gonna, we're just going to keep the true rows. Filter means something very specific in DAX. So uh, I'm going to come over here, and we're going to go get all the different types. So we've got, uh, whoops, I'm sorry, type to go and dine in, right? And so for each and every one, we're going to add a column with this definition. I'm going to type in exp. And so, uh, oops, my comma's right there. This is for a bad example. So let's, I'm just going to go ahead and do this by hand, since apparently I didn't get that part right. So for the first row, that should be true, right? Because type equals, I'm sorry, it should be false. Type equals uh, dine-in. Nope. Does to go equal dine-in? It does not. So that should be false. For the second row, for the second row, does uh, dine-in equal dine-in? Does that row equal dine-in? It sure does. So actually, this should be true, right? So we get a false and a true. And what does the filter function do? Well, it's going to go ahead and keep the true rows. So it's just going to keep dine-in right there. It's just going to keep dine in right there. So I'm going to type in type, and we're going to do dine in, and let's go ahead and add that to the filters. Add to the filters. That's an override filter, right? So this bit of code right here produced the temp table. Then we pass it into calculate, which took it and added it to the fill, added it to the filter context. Good. There we go. So now we've got both our current row values as filters. We perform current row filtering to get lunch right there, and we also have an override filter for dine in right there. Calculate is now done revising the filters, and so let's go ahead and set this to lunch and dine in. One sad little row, sad little row. There we go. Lunch and dine in. And now, with these revised filters, we can unfreeze the sub-expression and run it in that new filter context. So let's go ahead and get our blow dryer out and unfreeze that. Okay, much better, much nicer, much warmer. And let's go ahead and run it. So for each and every, uh, I'm sorry, not for each and every row, go get all the values of mini, right? Add a, uh, an expression column with this definition, go get the units for each row, and then sum up the results. So let's go ahead and select that. Control-C to copy it. Come over here, Control-Alt-V to paste special. Click on values and click OK. There we go. And now uh, we want to add a column to it where for every row we get the units and sum it up. You guys probably know that really, really well by now. Type in EXP, right? So we get one for the first row. The sum of one and nothing else is just the number one. So that one is what the calculate function sends back to uh, this expression column right here. The result for that is actually one, right? So that's the number. That's what calculate returns. It's what it brings back, right? But calculate has to tidy up after itself. It's, it's a good roommate. It always tidies up after itself, just like all revisors. And so it's going to set the filters back to the way it found them. So I'm going to control C on that little swatch of orange right there. Select these cells and control V to paste. And I'm going to be good this time and actually set these back to what they should be. So now we should be looking at all the rows. There's no more filters. Okay, good. Good, good. And now after all that, we're actually done. Uh, with this uh, cell right there. So let's go ahead and unhighlight that. No fill. And we'll highlight the one directly underneath it. So let's highlight this guy right there. Okay? Because we're going to run the exact same code, right? We're going to run the exact same code. But this time we're going to get a different answer because, no, we run this same code in a different row. In a different row. Up here we ran it in the row of shift equals lunch. Down here we're going to run it in the row of shift equals dinner. Okay? Okay, so... The very first thing we see in the code is the calculate revisor, which means we should freeze the sub-expression with our eyes. Let's go ahead and freeze that. It will only run after we revise the filters. The filters have not been revised yet, right? Not for this particular cell anyways. So now that we've got that, uh, we're going to revise the filters. And all revisors have two steps, current row filtering and override filters. So we're going to start with current row filtering, also known as context transition, where we add uh, any current row values as filters. Are there any values for the current row? Yeah, shift equals dinner. So let's go ahead and add that. Shift equals dinner. Not lunch anymore, dinner. Still no breakfast. Okay. So shift equals dinner. So calculate will take that value of the current row and add it as a filter. Hold down control to make a copy of it. There we go. 
right? Uh, so we're done with current row filtering, and now we have to check to see if there are any override filters. Well, uh, we already checked before. Yes, there are override filters. There's more than one argument to calculate, comma. So everything past that first argument is an override filter. It's an override filter. So, right, we're going to uh, – how are we going to get this override filter? Well, it's got this bit of code right here that determines how we get it. We're going to derive all the different values of type, regardless of filters, with that derivation right there, right? And we're going to pass it into the filter iterator, which will take that temp table produced by this derivation, add a column to it with this definition, an expression column, where we check to see if each row's type is equal to dine in. And then we're just going to keep the true rows, right? And so what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to type in type equals to go and dine in. And I happen to know then my definition for these guys is wrong. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. We'll do this by hand, right? I'm going to do this by hand. Right? I made the example easier right before I recorded this, and I forgot to fix that part. Okay, so we're going to add an expression column where for each row we're going to see if uh, each row's type is equal to dine-in, right? So uh, we're going to see if uh, the type is equal to dine-in. For the first row, it's false. Control-C to copy. Control-V to paste. Hey, for that second row, it's true, right? And uh, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to keep the true rows. That's what the filter iterator does. That one's false. That one's true. So we're just going to keep that value. So we keep type is dine in, right? So now, uh, now that we've run this bit of code to get our temp table, right, because it's argument two of calculate, calculate will then take this temp table and add it as an override filter, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select that, move it up here, hold down control, to make a copy of it. More accurate to say that it moves it, but I like to make a copy. That way I could see it in both places. Okay, so now, 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 the uh, calculate function has uh, performed both current row filtering and uh, added any override filters, which means it's done revising the filter context. This is now our revised filter context within which we can run our sub-expression, which means we're allowed to unfreeze our sub-expression here. So I'm going to hover over that and get the blow dryer out and unfreeze it, right? Stick it in the microwave for 30 seconds. There we go. Okay, so we've unfrozen our sub-expression, right? And we can now run it because we've got the filters just right, just the way we want them. So uh, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go get all the visible. Oh, I forgot to actually set the filters. I usually have the opposite problem. Okay, so now we should just be looking for dinner, and we should just be looking for dine-in. There we go. Dinner and dine-in, right? So uh, now we're going to get all the visible rows of mini under this new filter context of dinner and dine-in, so we only get the dinner and dine-in rows, right? So we're going to get those two rows, whoops, those two rows right there, Control-C to copy. Come down here, Control-Alt-V to paste special. Click on values and click OK. All right. And now, uh, since we've gotten all the rows of many right there, we've derived a temp table based on that derivation right there. Uh, we pass it to sub X, which will add an expression column with that definition and sum up the results. Speaking of which, I'm going to type in EXP. And all that work's already done. So for every row, we get the units. So we get 1, and we get 2, and we sum up the results because this is the sub x function. So 1 plus 2, any math majors out there, is the number 3, right? And so that number 3 is what gets passed back. That's what calculate returns, right? That's, what it, that's the actual output of it. So I'm type in 3 right there. Uh, but we're not quite done, right? We've gotten our value, our 3 right there. Uh, but in addition to the value, calculate has created this new revised filter context. It has to put it back. Luckily, uh, Calculate, like all revisors, is a very good roommate, so it will reset the filters uh, back to the way it found them, right? So uh, I'm going to click up here, Control-C on that little swatch of orange, select these cells, and Control-V to paste to simulate getting those filters back to the way that Calculate found it. I'm even going to remember this time to set those back as well. How about that? How about that? Okay. So now, uh, we've gotten the value, we've uh, reset the filter, so we're actually done with that cell right there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And we're actually done adding the expression column, so I can stop highlighting this bit as well. And click there. Set this back to that kind of lightish gray. There we go. Okay, so we've gotten all the values of shift right there. We've added an expression column to it with this definition, where for every single row, we've revised the filters, adding a filter both for the current row, shift or dinner, and also a filter for dining based on this override definition right there, right? Which has given us these numbers. So that one, that's the number of lunch dining units. That three, that's the number of dinner dining units, right? And what are we going to do with this column? Well, we're going to average it because it's the average x function. So from here, I go equals average. And I just select those cells right there. 
Close the parentheses, and I hit enter, and I get the number 2. I get the number 2, which is, by the way, oh, forgot to change that one as well, is actually the uh, correct answer that we are looking for. It's the correct answer that we are looking for. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, a lot of stuff there, uh, and I will say if this seems like it's, it's, it's a bit tricky right now, you're kind of on the edge of understanding it, I, I will say that while you're starting out, you will tend to do current row filtering or override filters. You don't tend to do both when you're starting out, but it's good to know that you can do both. And it's also important to remember that the, the current row filters get added before uh, the override filters for, for what it's worth. That will come into play later on. Okay, so a lot of stuff there. I sure hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.